Good morning everyone, how are you today? I just thought I'd come on and share my um, monthly recap ramblings. Um, and that's where I just go over pen and inks that I've used for this month. Um, you know, what pens I wrote dry, what I'm still in, you know, what pens I really enjoyed using. Um, my journaling and how that's going and just other little bits and pieces of randomness, I guess you could say. Um, so let's get into it. Uh, so we did this um, at the beginning of the month and I thought well, I'll go over and I'll um, share with you how I really enjoyed the pen and ink pairings. And I'm finding I've been in this hobby now for eight, nearly nine years and I'm getting better with working out what inks will suit what pens and their nibs. Because some pens actually write wetter than others and some and, and some inks have a drier sort of base so they um, don't flow as well in um, normal sort of fine nib pens. So, oh gosh, I'm, am I even making sense? Oh, maybe I need another cup of coffee. But anyway, let's get into this. Um, so the Twisby Eco Tea and Saffron with a broad nib. I had the Diamine Shimmertastic Cocoa Shimmer. Now that was a carryover from the previous month in April. That is a beautiful pairing. So we're going to go all the way over to here, I think. So that was lovely. It's been written dry. Um, the Twisby Diamond 580 um, Pink with a broad nib. That's also been written dry. I don't know why I hadn't written that in. Written dry. Hang on. I'm just going to move my chair. Okay. Um, that's also... I find I'm enjoying broad nibs. Not so much for using in my Hobonichi because I find um, the broad nibs are probably just a little bit too broad for that, the small grid lines. But I really enjoy using them for letter writing. And um, you can actually see on particular paper, like especially the IRFL, um paper, um, you can see that shading of the ink, which is really lovely to see. And it just makes it look a little bit interesting. Now the next one, the Sailor 1911 Standard in black and gold. Um, it's got a 14 karat broad nib, but it is so not a broad. It is runs more like a medium fine, I think, of a Sailor even. Um, I have a Sailor Pro Gear Slim with a medium nib, and that actually like, writes broader than the broad nib. So... Um, yeah, I'm not uh, for those people who really love fine nibs. I think that would work well for them. But I'm finding I'm struggling to find inks that I like in it at the moment. So um, even though this Sailor Shikiori Toko Matsu ink is a, one of my favourite green inks, I did not enjoy this pairing at all. Um, it, it I kind of found it a little bit frustrating. Um, the next one, the Sailor Pro Gear Slim um, Princess uh, Kaguya, Kaguya um, 14 karat medium fine nib, and that had Sailor Ink Studio 573. That's a very fine sort of nib for me. Um, the ink actually did perform well in it, but it wasn't my favourite pairing for that pen. So, I mean, it, it worked well enough, but just... Yeah, we're only going to go halfway for that one. Oh, yeah, that's been written dry too. I should write that in. I actually wrote a lot of pens dry this month, just from my letter writing and journaling. Uh, so the next one, we've got the Bendu Euphoria and Goulet Pens Exclusive Earl Grey Tea with a medium nib. Um, and it was inked with Ferris wheel Press Steeped Umber. That was a really lovely pairing. That's also been written dry. Um, that was very enjoyable to use. It's still a fairly new pen for me. Uh, so I'm still sort of getting a, a bit of an idea of um, what I enjoy in it. 
Now the Little Quaker Sport White with a fine nib. Um, I had that inked with J. Herban Pussia de Lune and that was beautiful. I, oh, that's also been written dry. That was such a lovely pen and ink pairing. I really enjoyed the colour and the flow of this ink. Um, it worked well in the fine nib. Very enjoyable. Now the next one was the Benny Euphoria and Atlas Stationers exclusive Gold Coast with a medium nib and I inked that with one of the um, ink mixes that we did with the Birmingham Pen Company um, inks. So that one that we did there was Boiler Steam um, and I had it inked with that and it was very, very juicy. Like I would almost say that this ink was too wet for that pen in the fact that the pen has a very wet nib and flows very well and I think this ink even though it was a love it was lovely to write with um, both the ink and the pen I think it was just too flowy for that pen so we're just going to go halfway for that one even though I enjoyed it I oh, actually know we'll go we'll go one more so the next one we had was the Estabrook SD in Tortoise with a medium nib and inked with Birmingham Pen Company Waterfront Dusk. I really enjoyed that pairing. Um, it flowed well, it wrote well. I just enjoyed picking it up time and time again and wrote that, oh, that one's been written dry. All of these have been written dry. Uh, this one too, written dry. So it was just a wonderful pen and ink pairing that I just really enjoyed this month. So, oh, and these two envelopes were sent to earlier in the month. I haven't written in there the other person that got theirs. So the next one we have was the Justin Turnings Custom Copper Line with a Platinum 3776 Medium Nib. I had Colourvers Brunch date in that. It worked beautifully. Um, it's just not my favourite pairing. Like, I think... Teranashi Opera Rose in that pen is still my favourite pairing. But it worked It worked well enough, you know? Like, it still flowed well and wrote well. There were no stopping and starting issues or anything like that. It was just more the fact that I prefer Teranashi's Opera Rose in that pen so far. Um, oh, that's been written dry too. Okay. So the next one was the Ranga Monterey with a fine nib. I had that inked with Palo de Roshizuku uh, Fuyugaki. That was a beautiful pairing. I really enjoyed the nib on that pen. I enjoyed the ink flow in it. It, it was one of the first pens to actually be written dry through the month. Just absolutely loved it. I can't wait to try other inks in it now. Uh, the next one was the Just Turnings Deluxe Blue Abalone with a medium nib and we had that inked with Birmingham Pen Company Cold Steam. Once again, a really wet ink with quite a wet nib and um, it was beautiful but I think the, the pen and ink pairing was probably just a little bit too wet. So, um, but beautiful ink, lovely pen to write with, just not together, you know? Uh, next one, the Leonardo Memento Zero Grande um, in Planetary Nebula with a medium nib and I had that inked with Robert Austin Morning Mist. That is still, oh actually this is written dry too, sorry everyone, I'm a bit all over the place aren't I? So that's been written dry. This one here, the Leonardo um, with the Robert Austin Morning Mist. Now that Robert Austin Morning Mist ink, I've found to be quite a dry ink in certain pens. But paired with this Leonardo, which has a very wet nib, it was just a beautiful combination. Like, um, it's still going actually, because it has quite a big reservoir in its um, like reservoir like ink capacity. That was beautiful. Really, really, really enjoyed that. Uh, next one, which has also been written dry. 
um, that was a Just Turnings Unicorn Horn with a medium nib and inked with Birmingham Pen Company Jevra. That wrote very well. It was a really good pairing. Um, enjoyable to use. Once again, one of the first pens that I actually wrote dry for the month. So I think that sort of says something about it as well. Um, I've got one more. Now the next one, the Monteverde Strata Sapphire um, Blue with a fine nib and I had it inked with Robert Oster Grey Seas. The, uh, the Monteverde Strata, it's a metal pen. So quite often I find metal pens um, almost too heavy for my hand. And this one was not. Like um, last year I won a Monteverde Ritma and I, uh, with Yappa Brands. And I ended up gifting that pen to my friend because I just found it too heavy for me and she was quite taken with it and wanted to try it. So I gave her that pen and she really enjoys it. But I just found for me it was too heavy for my hand. So I was wondering whether this Monteverde, Monteverde Strata, being a metal pen, would it be the same? And it wasn't. I really enjoyed reaching for it over and over again and it wrote beautifully. There was no stopping or starting issues the ink and pen were paired very well. So, oh, that's been written dry as well. When I said I've written a lot of pens dry, like, oh, you know, it's the truth. I've actually had to ink up more pens during the month. So this was really lovely to write with. Um... Now, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I got Nelly Mother's Day gift of the Twisby Eco in Cafe Bronze with a broad nib. That pen is just the most delicious colour. Um, it's just lovely. So, and I had it inked with Robert Oster Cafe Crema, which was an ink sample, and really enjoyed that. So, that has also been written dry. Um, um, and I've used up that whole sample now, so that was wonderful to write with. Okay, so the next one was added on the 9th of May, and it's the Pelican M400 in white tortoise with a fine nib. And I still have it inked with Robert Oster and Bookbinder's design. Why haven't I got one of these things up there? Hmm. That goes up there. Um, Bookbinder's design, Melbourne Tram Green. That is still linked up and going well. So out of all of these, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 pens were written dry. Now, added to this lineup, I, as I said, I found three pens in my bedside table drawer that were left over from March. So I added those to the lineup. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, that was the, I thought I'd actually written them dry, but I hadn't. They still had a little bit of ink left in them. It was the, Let's go back and see if I've actually written it down in here. Uh, nope, nope. Is it here? Yeah, so I had the Twisby Eco in Cream Rose Gold with a medium nib um, inked with Robert Oster Chalk Pudding. And that's still got a little bit of ink left in it. I also had other... Oh, it might even be February, maybe. Or did I ink them up and not even write them in here? That may have happened too. Yeah, that looks like it's happened. Anyway, the other ones I had was a Twisby Eco Tea in Royal Jade and Rose Gold. And I had it inked with uh, Robert Oster Pulp Addiction um, exclusive ink, which was Blue Addiction. So that was it. I found that in my bedside table drawer. And the other pen I found was the um, Lamy LX in um, Marin with a medium nib. And I had it inked with Birmingham Pen Company, um, Pennsylvania Fieldstone. It had the tiniest amount of ink. So I used those and added those to my lineup. They, the 
um, Twisby Echo Tea in Royal Jade has been written dry, as is the Lamy LX Marin. So they were added to my lineup. Oh, and then I decided to add more. So I added, when I swatched these inks, I immediately wanted to put some of them into pens. So I put the Sally Yurimiko Amamoyoi, Amamoyoi, I don't know. Sorry if I'm butchering that name. Um, I put that in the Opus 88 collar row in, uh, with a medium nib and that is still going strong. It's a beautiful combination. It's flowing very well. Uh, the next one was the Twisby Diamond 580 in Smoke Rose Gold with a medium nib. And it's inked with Van Diemen's and the Flywheel Exclusive, which I believe is Type Cabinet Green. I've only got Cabinet Green there, but I think it's called Type um, Cabinet Green. That's still going. It's got the smallest amount of ink left in it. I've actually written with it quite a bit. Um, and the I put... Um, Van Diemen's Leatherwood Honey Amber. It's actually a Leatherwood ham Honey Amber. This is the original one they came out with. Um, they've since changed the formula slightly and it's just called Leatherwood Honey, which is also lovely. I actually bought a bottle of that over here. But you can see how it's th this is more brown and got more yellow undertones, I think, whereas this has got more of an orange undertone to it. So I put that in my Dust Turning Matte Elven Wood with a 14 karat medium nib and just loved the combination. So much so that I actually wrote that one dry and then I re-inked it again. So that's the ones that we've got. Oh, and then I inked this up on the last Friday because I was going to the Southeast Queensland Journal Keepers Meetup and... Um, some friends from there wanted to try various pens so I inked this up just so people could try it and I also inked up the little um, Kuwaiko Sport in Macchiato with Diamine Sierra and I inked up the Lamy Cozy Cream with a broad nib with the Robert Oster Romeo and Juliet just so people could write with them and sort of get a feeling for what pen they liked. Um, so that's that. That's that done. Now, this is a bit all over the place, I'm afraid. So, if, as far as bottled inks, that actually went up by nine. So, I had 99 at the beginning of the month. It went up by nine. I kind of did like a little bit of a last hurrah and um, bought some things that I'd really um, had my eye on because now I'm on my no spend. So, I've been on my no spend for, I think, about two weeks now. So these things were all ordered beforehand. Um, and so far the no spend's going well, by the way. I haven't I haven't spent any money, so that's good. But yeah, so nine new bottles of ink, um, which came to 108, but then I've given away two bottles of ink to a friend. So that gives me 106 bottles of ink. Um, ink samples went up by 10 because I got the 10 ink samples from Pen Friend Tanya. Um, so we're now sitting at 164. Fountain pens, this is a little bit all over the place too because I can't remember what I included in my um, normal lineup because I actually had some pens that I was selling. But it was 53 pens and then it went up to 54 with the Twisby Eco, I think. And then it went down by four because I sold my Estbrook SD um, in Candy, and I sold my Twisby Eco in Lilac, my Twisby Eco in Cer uh, Cerulean, no, not Cerulean, sorry, Persian Green, and Twisby Eco Tea in Mint. So I sold those four pens. I have then given away three pens. So one of those pens was from my Penefactor. It was the um, Lambid 2, um, metal sort of pocket pen um, that I used previously in the, in April but I just found the pen was a little bit too heavy for me so I gave that to pen friend Ray um, and he then gave me a pen so then I need to add that into here as well um, and then I've got the Twisby Eco in the cafe in bronze that I got for Mother's Day so 
yeah, all these numbers are a little bit all over the place. I might have to actually go back and do a complete recount. But that's where we're at for that. Oh, and then last uh, week I also inked up some pens to go, more pens actually, to go to the South East Queensland Journal Keepers Meetup um, just so people could um, have a look at the inks and try the pens. And that was the Sailor Pro Gear Slim in the blue green nebula with a medium nib and I has I have it inked with Sailor Tea Time Moroccan Mint Tea um, and I inked up the Bennu Euphoria and Atlas Stationer's exclusive Gold Coast with Dime Mine Ink Vent Jack Frost and then I'm trying this Sailor 1911 Standard with um, a Tassia Cha ink sample from Pen Friend Tanya and I thought Tassia inks tend to be um, more lubricated and um, wet inks. So I thought that might work well in this Sailor 1911 standard, but I'm still not 100% sold on that. So that's where that's at. Um, and then into, oh my gosh, what have I done here? What is that? Uh-oh. Can you see that? I don't know what's done that. Did I have something on that and it's gone? Oh no, it's almost like it's got wet or something. That's strange. Anyway, so this is my Hobonichi. Uh, where were we at the end of last month? Here we go. So I'm still doing, I'm just checking I'm in frame. I'm still doing this kind of layout and just sort of, um, it's almost like a drop sheet of just randomness things. Um, I sometimes look at the weather I put to-dos in here, I record whether I've done a video, sometimes I put dinner in here, sometimes I put in um, happy mail that's been received, that sort of thing. And um, and then I, I tend to just fill in with stickers and things like that. So this is still working well for me. I'm enjoying, this is the second month of doing it like this and I'm enjoying, enjoying using these daily pages, oh sorry, weekly page layouts like this. Um, and as I said last Saturday, I went to the SEQ Journal Keepers Meetup. So Andrew, one of our members, Andrew actually makes these. He's very good at using Canva. So for the first one that I ever attended, he actually did us like travel boarding passes with Starbucks because we were actually meeting at the Starbucks and it had our names on it and what nib we like preferred with a fountain pen. And it was, that was so cool. Like he, <laughs> he knows his stuff. He's really good at doing all that. So, um, yeah, so that's that. And then as far as weekly pages go um oh i took um bella and her little friend to see kung fu panda um so i'm still using this i've still got more room here um i'm still on the shadow sister by lucinda riley i haven't done a lot of reading this month actually um i only watched two movies this month um first one was glass and the second one um, we watched as a family for family movie night was Jumanji The Next Level. So which always gives us a good laugh. They're great movies. And um, and then I've been watching, um, kind of almost binge watching. Like I don't actually sit and just watch TV and do it. Like I have to journal or write letters while I'm watching. I can't just sit there and watch something or knit. Sometimes I knit too. Um, but I've kind of been binging the NCIS series. Um, so we've done seasons 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 and 18. I know that's a lot, isn't it? But as I said, like once I've, we've done dinner, the kitchen has been cleaned, um, all the washings folded and put away, I tend to just sit on the lounge and I'll... I'll do that while I'm writing letters or journaling and just watch, half watch, I guess you could say. So this is just more of the same as I like quotes, stickers, um, using a different pen and ink for each kind of 
I guess, paragraph that I'm writing about because they're different things. So that's still working well for me. Sometimes I write this way and that way it's different every day. It's just whatever takes my fancy. Um, oh, these little number stickers down here. These were a gift from pen friend Tina. So that was actually numbered pet tape. And I just fussy cut them out and used them down here on my Hobo pages. Because last month I used... Um, the rainbow um, stickers, date stickers from Simone's Ko-Fi or Kofi thing that you can buy and download and just print yourself. So I used those last month and the previous month in March. And then Tina gave me these and so I decided to use them for this one. Um, yep, just trying to sort of, I think this I tried to make a phone free day so I wasn't actually had, had my phone on me or in my hand all the time. I kind of just left it in one place and didn't touch it, which worked well for me. It's nice to have a little break from it. Um, what else? Yep, more stickers. Oh, these beautiful things are from pen friend um, Louise. And she's got a YouTube channel called um, Coffee Tea Paper. I'll put a link to that below. But she sent these in some Happy Mail. So I added those in here. Um, this is like one of those embossed seals. Um, it was on the back of um, a package that I received from Alien Smith Designs. Um, now she is Illegal Aileen on Instagram. I'll try and put a link for that below too. Um, she sells like, I bought a beautiful um, pen pouch from her. I've got it here, I think, or is it upstairs? I bet you I've left it upstairs. Okay, we'll have to watch, we'll have to put that in another video. But um, she makes pen pouches. She's also got rubber stamps, like of little ink bottles and things like that. So I bought a little ink bottle stamp and a three um, pen pouch from her. I like to support you know, Aussie um, makers when I can. So that was from her package. So I've just stuck that in there. Um, and that was before my no buy too, I should add. Uh, these are my handmade butterfly and moth stickers that I do. Um, yep. So more stickers. Oh, these were two teas that my pen friend Tanya sent me in some happy mail with her letter. So I stuck those in there. This particular day, I think I had an appointment up the coast and Simon and I went to Starbucks and got something, like a coffee and something to eat. Um, so yeah. More of the same. Um, oh, these are when I decided to swatch my new bottled inks that I got that week. Um, but some of them actually bled through this paper. So you can sort of see here there's some bleed through, but oh well, live and learn, hey? Um, I took Bella to see, um, her school did a Mary Poppins musical, so I took her to see that. Um, more quotes and just writing in different directions. That's the thing, like if you're bored with your journal or the way you're journaling, turn it around a different way and try that or turn it upside down. Just, I don't know, mix it up. Make it interesting for you. It's not about what everyone else does. It's about what sparks interest and joy for you. Um, this is about reading. I was trying to encourage myself to read more. These cute stickers are from um, a pen pal, Alice. Uh, I've inked up some more pens, so I wrote those in there. Oh, now this is when I attended the um, the SEQ Journal Keepers Meetup on Saturday. Um, I was sitting next to um, Karen from Flourished Florals on Instagram, and she has a beautiful collection of pens, so she actually brought some of them with her so I could try them. Um, I've never tried a Mont Blanc before, so it's actually nice to try and write with hers. Um, and then Sylvia, who's um, Art Life Journal on Instagram, she had some pens there. And one of hers um, was a Just Turnings one that had an architect nib on it, so I wanted to try that. And then she had this highlighter ink. 
Um, I haven't tried any of the neon sort of highlighter inks. I don't know if any of you have, but she had the New Glows Firefly and she had that in a twist bit and I tried that and I thought, oh, it was just so beautiful. Like I actually, it, I don't know. I've, I don't know why I haven't tried them before, but put a comment below if you've tried them. So a couple of... Um, couple of the members at the SAQ Journal Keepers, they have tried them and they've got bottles and they said they use them for note taking and underlining and highlighting things. So I thought that was really interesting. Anyway, so this library quote sticker was from Andrew. Um, Louise from Coffee Tea, Paper, Coffee Tea Paper had actually written our names on a little name tag around the table so we knew where to sit. Um, this is um, gentleman here, Andrew. He is a rural family lawyer on Instagram. He has an amazing enthusiasm for fountain pens and he has great knowledge about them and, and likes troubleshooting things and working out, um, you know, how to fix something. Like he's, if anyone has any issues, they tend to go to Andrew and ask him because he has such a wealth of knowledge about it. So he's, He's a gentleman that I was talking about before that actually is very good with Canva and creates things. So he created these. This is from uh, Nikki and she's a lovely lady. She's actually got her own uh, YouTube channel too called WW Design and she does a lot of um, junk journaling and making ephemera and just all sorts of paper crafting. She's very clever and I'll put a link to her channel below too. So that was from her. Uh, this was from, oh, this was from her as well. She made that. Um, these two stamped images are on beautiful paper. I don't, I'll have to ask Roz what kind of paper it is. Um, Roz is Rosamond's journal on Instagram and she has a beautiful page. Um, she's really into that Japanese style and um, traveler's notebooks and she does a lot of beautiful watercolors as well. Just gorgeous. Um, and then this was uh, by Chelsea, who is another member of the SEQ Journal Keepers. Um, she's a lovely girl. I got to meet her for the first time, which was nice. So there were some old faces and some new faces there. So I had the best time. I really did. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, it was lovely chatting to everyone. Um, so, yeah. So that's, that's that. I think... Oh, and this was... This is from Louise, a coffee tea paper, and she's also very good at watercolours, and she sells these in her Etsy shop. So I'll put a link to that below as well. Put a link to, put a link below to that. Oh, seriously, I think I need more sleep. Um, anyway, so that's super cute, and I'm going to be sending that out to a friend. Um, so that's about all I've got for you. And I can't put, I don't even know what that is. What is that? That's bizarre. I don't even know. It seems to be like ink or something, but I don't know how I got ink on it. And it's all down there. What is that? You see? Oh, well, it's meant to be loved and used. I can't be too precious about things. <laughs> Anyway, I hope wherever you are in the world that you're having um, a good day, that you're being kind to yourself, and I will see you back here next time. Thank you for tuning in, everyone. Bye.